rise, Dr. Karma Bryant. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you guys. I'm not going to be on very long. I just wanted to come on really quick before your weekend starts. So I'm not quite sure when you're going to get the video. Some of you guys actually get the video the next day, which is on a Saturday. And some of you guys, if, you, if you're not being alerted, let me know because I'm also having some problems with the alerts um, when I watch other videos. But today I just want to come on really quick and I wanted to talk about the narcissist who is running around in your head rent free. And I say that because of the fact that some of you, <clears throat> excuse me, some of you may have been in short-term relationship, but you see how much damage short-term relationships cause. And some of you have been in longer, could be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty years, have been in these long-term relationships or, you know, these whatever is long-term to the narcissist, you know, but the longer you're in a relationship with the narcissist, remember the longer, the more, and the longer they project their thoughts onto you. So, you know, all of a sudden you don't like crabs, you know, all of a sudden you have allergies or, you know, you don't like this, or this is stupid, you know? So you you're with a narcissist long enough to a point where their thoughts begin to integrate with your thoughts so much so that you begin thinking that these are your own thoughts. And they're really not your own thoughts, but how can you, um, you know, how can you uh, differentiate the two or how do you stop this from happening? You guys have to excuse me for a minute. My little forehead all greasy. Okay, hold on. Make it that right. My bad. I'm not even going to cut this out of the video. So y'all just have to see it raw. But anyway, but you know, how do you, how can you tell, you know, their thoughts integrating with your thoughts? Number one, nine times out of 10, you're not looking for it. It's, it, it's become automatic automatically you start making decisions and your decisions are weighed off of the opinions uh, or the things that that narcissist has said to you in the beginning. Certain cars you won't choose because there are certain cars that that person didn't like. And so all of a sudden you don't like the car or you don't like the color, but in actuality, you really do like the color or you do like the car. And if you really stop to think about it for just a minute, you begin to think, man, why don't I like this? And really it wasn't even your thought. It was their thought imposed on you. Let's say, for example, you go and you're shopping for a house. There's certain things now you're looking for the house, but you're always gauging buying a house based off of that narcissist's opinion. You know, okay, or let's go to something easier. Let's go to something a little easier. Some of you guys post pictures. And the and, and I just came out of some training today, and it was really, really powerful because, it, it you know, of course, with the ministry, but, you know, the motives of the heart. The motives of the heart is just a, a basic, you know, basics. A lot of times you do things with the wrong motives. And then sometimes well many people have the right motives but do the wrong things. So you have to understand that with the narcissist, everything that they do, their motives are off. Everything that they do, everything that they're trying to do, they always have the wrong motives. They can be celebrating a child's birthday party and give a speech at the birthday party, but everything turns back on them. You know, they could be celebrating someone's baby birth or or something, but you'll notice that everything turns back on them. You know, so it, all their motives are wrong. Relationship wise trying to get into a relationship their motives for trying to get into the relationship is wrong you know you have good motives but sometimes you make mistakes do it good well-meaning people make mistakes when your heart is right and you're trying to do the right thing so for example when people come into counseling with me people come into counseling with me and they're grieving sometimes it's not you know as a young therapist i thought i had to talk to try to make them feel better but you don't realize that sometimes you know even when people are grieving we say the wrong things because we really don't have the answer you we, we don't know why the person died you know why it's time to go but sometimes well meaning people you have the right motives in your heart you know you just say the wrong things at the wrong time and sometimes then it's hard to be quiet sometimes but sometimes when people are grieving it's better to be quiet and not say anything and let them talk they need to be supported but the motives of your heart may have been right well with the narcissist they're always going to have they're always going to have stuff to say in order to pull people to them their their motives are off so now in your motives you know I'm not saying that everybody motives are right sometimes you do things out of pain some of you get into relationships out of pain and your motive is to hurt the narcissist but the problem is is that you think that the narcissist actually thinks like you do. Sorry, y'all. Like a little chicken, fried chicken. But um, the the reason why you're getting into a relationship is because you're broken hearted and you're trying to get over the pain, but you're trying to get over the pain by jumping into another relationship in hopes to forget about the last relationship with the narcissist. Now you're getting in a relationship in hopes to hurt the narcissist, but you have to understand the narcissist does not think like you. You think like you. We think like we think. The narcissist does not think like you think. The narcissist thinks opposite. 
opposite have that looked on camera opposite than you think you know so you're trying to get into a relationship to heal your broken heart they're getting to a relationship because you ran out of fuel you know or they made sure they get in a relationship and they show all these pictures of their family in order to hurt you because their whole motive is to make sure that they hurt you and put that knife in your heart is is because it bring it gives them great pleasure and fuel makes them feel empowered you on the other hand you have moved on and you have gotten on with your life. You're finally over this narcissist. You're finally moving on. You finally got into a good relationship and everything. And then you're just on Facebook posting pictures. Nothing big, nothing, you know, nothing. But, but the problem is, is, is you're posting pictures, but your motives are right. You know, I'm just posting pictures to be posting pictures. That's all. But you have to remember that a narcissist thinks that everybody thinks the same way that they do. So their whole thing is that you're just trying to, you're just trying to hurt me. You're just trying to, because it's a narc injury now because you found someone. But the thing about it is if your motives are wrong and you're doing it out of pain and you get into a relationship with people, you're just as bad as the narcissist is because you're hurting the person that you're getting with. Now in your mind, you're thinking it's time for me to get in a relationship. It's time for me to stop. But do you see how this narcissist is running through your head? You know, everything that you do, the narcissist is always on the forefront, is the foundation, is like the motive as to why you do what you do. You know, you post pictures that, uh, what is it called? The revenge pictures. You lost weight and you, you uber sexy. Now, now you got to show your little six pack, four pack, three pack, 40 ounce, whatever you going to show on camera. You going on there, you uber sexy now, you know. So you going to make sure you post a whole bunch of pictures. Some of y'all stay, stay on the camera. Some of you guys stay on the camera and the pictures are not even for the people that are on your Facebook page or on your uh, social media account. Sorry, you guys, but not even on your social media account. The whole reason, your whole motive as to why you're taking the picture is because you're hoping that that narcissist is going to see I'm doing better now. See, you thought you had me. See, some of you guys won't say it. Sometimes it's hard to have to come to the reality of that's really why you're doing it. But the more you're doing it, the more you're really hurting yourself. Some of them see you, but they're not going to say anything because you are causing enough pain to yourself. The narcissist doesn't have to cause the pain. You're causing enough pain for yourself. Once you really stop doing that and like you don't care anymore, then they realize, wait a minute, something has changed. Something is not right. Something changed. And then they begin to look, okay, why, you know, she's not. Now, keep in mind, like I said a few minutes ago, a narcissist always thinks that you, everybody thinks like they do. You, on the other hand, and, and that's general, some, not all, but the way that you think, you think the way that you think. You don't think like a narcissist. Why would she do me like this? Who in the world could leave their family? How can you leave your infant child? You know, how are you just going to jump into another relationship with someone as if you never had any kids? How are you going to start a whole new family as if they were there in the beginning and I'm the side chick and I was the, the, the wife or I was the husband. And all of a sudden I'm like the, I'm the side dude, you know, how, okay. But you're asking the question and you're gauging it off of a pretty rational mind. You have to understand that narcissists don't have rational mind or rational thinking. That's why they always assume you're doing the exact same thing that you do. I mean, the exact same thing that they do. If they cheat on their taxes, and they're using principles because they'll use certain principles and then you use the exact same principle, but you're honest with it. You know, you're honest with what you do, you know, then they assume that you're lying just like they're lying because you're using the same principles that you're doing. And there's no way, there's no way that you, and there's no way, see, they can't handle the fact that they're honest people in the world because they're not honest. They've never been honest. They've never had integrity. They never, I mean, never had ethics, never had, you know, morals. And so they automatically assume everybody's like that. They use good principles, but they use them for the wrong motive. And so using them for the wrong reasons and for the wrong motives, they automatically assume because we use those principles and it works in our favor. They assume that we're doing something just as wrong as they're doing, you know, but think about it. Like I just said a minute ago, you know, most of the time you don't realize what you're doing. You're doing it on automatic. In order to change and to begin to heal, sometimes the hard thing is looking at yourself in the mirror or looking at yourself or sitting down and asking yourself the question, why am I doing what I'm doing? And or why am I thinking the way that I'm thinking? Nine times out of 10, you're probably thinking or doing what you're doing because that narcissist is the baseline. 
that narcissist has said something to you, that narcissist has told you something, you have lived with them long enough and you have picked up, in order to keep the peace in the house, you just go ahead and go along with what the narcissist does, whether it's right or wrong, just to keep the peace, just to keep them from going off and flying off the handle, just so they won't say anything to you. You will just, you would just try to make you try to make peace in the house and you try to make peace in the house. And what you do is just to comply and agree with the things they do to keep them quiet. But guess what? Once you leave the relationship, you take those same mindset and you still operate in that same mindset. And you're frustrated because you don't understand why you do the things that you do or because you never really sat down to think about it. But now that you have the knowledge to think about what you're doing and why you're doing it, why don't I like this? Why am I doing it like this? Why are you taking so many pictures? If you're honest with yourself, and you putting all those pictures on there, really, you're in hopes that they'll see the picture. You know, unless you're a narcissist and you're taking all the pictures of yourself and you think you're cute. Let us tell you you're cute. You know, you, you, you can be cute. You can be cute. Now, we normal people. I'm not saying that you have to depend on us to give you a compliment and everything. But but dang, if you got 4,000 pictures, can you give us an opportunity to compliment you too? You know, while you complimenting yourself? Now, I'm saying we need to be confident about ourselves. We do need to have confidence about ourselves. That is true. And we don't have to depend on other people to um, make us feel good about ourselves. You should feel good about yourself. Now, you ugly and you think you gorgeous, we ain't gonna argue with you. But I don't think we got ugly people on here. But... The point is, is that, you know, with a narcissist, you got to ask yourself, you've been in a relationship with a narcissist. This is not a normal relationship that you're coming out of. You have to check to see why you're doing what you're doing. Why are you taking so many pictures? Be honest with yourself. The hardest thing is to be honest with yourself because you'll lie to your own self. And if you lie to your own self, you'll lie to us too. So when we ask the question or just tell you the reason why you're doing this, the only reason why you did this, or this is why you did this. Yeah, uh -uh, uh -uh, because you uh -uh. if you're that defensive, you need to check yourself, check yourself because you might be doing it because they're still there. They're still running around in your head. You're still doing things, saying things, living life concerned with what they're going to say, concerned with how they're going to react. You can literally hear the argument in your head. And so you will automatic. You just automatic now. So in order to stop that automatic behavior and, and, and subconsciously, you know, you have these thoughts in your head, but you've never brought it to the forefront to address it. That's a process of your healing, too. That is a process of your healing. I went through it just like many people went through it. You know, why are you doing what you're doing? Why you are still in you are still uh, captured or held captive in your head and you're the ones with the key. You know, you're being held captive in your head. Some of these narcs are long gone. Some of them are even deceased, but you're still living off of what they said. You're still living off of how they treated you. You're still living life with them being the gauger, if that's correct, or the founder or the, what is it, the baseline of how you're supposed to live. And you build everything off of what they've said to you. That doesn't look good on you. That's not a pretty color on you. That, you know, you shouldn't wear this or you shouldn't, you look fat in this and your hair don't look right. So everything that you do, you still base it off of those last words that were said. It's time to go back and uproot those words because you're living life based off of you, their thoughts and their words have integrated with you to a point where you have taken ownership for the things that they have said. You've taken ownership for somebody else's words and now they're running around in your head Head. You know, you can, some of you guys have nightmares. These people are running around in your head, not paying any kind of rent. But the way that you get over that is that you have to address it and be honest with yourself. And you will be surprised at why you do some of the things that you do. Some of the things that you do, you should not be doing because of the fact that you haven't healed. But to address it, you got to fit. You got to be honest with yourself and ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why do I think the way that I think? Why am I behaving the way that I'm behaving? Why am I taking all these pictures? Why do I want to get a house like that to impress him or to show him that I can do or I can show her that I can do better or I got to make sure I get a woman? Some of you guys went to start dating. You dated ones that look very much like the last narcissist that you had. Some of you guys didn't listen. And some of you guys are getting back into relationship with narcissists, but you got to understand that if you don't heal, you'll keep getting into a narcissistic relationship. And trust you me, the worst, they'll get worse and worse and worse and worse until you meet that greater. That greater one is the one that you can't detect. A lot of narcissists you can't detect. A lot of them you can't pick up. When you get to that greater narcissist, they're hidden in plain sight. They're on stealth mode. You don't even know that they, they're there. 
And it's everything that you've ever wanted. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. I am on my way back out. Uh, not out the door, but I have another meeting I have to go to. So I appreciate you guys. Hey, if you guys are looking for counseling, if you're in the state of Washington, contact me at Dr. Carmen Bryant at Outlook.com. I'm doing online counseling only because of the COVID. And of course, you guys hear about a new strand, strange strand that has come out. And so I am moving offices. You guys are so sweet. You guys were thank you were um, congratulating me, for me and my family moving. And no, the family not moving. And I'm not going too far. I'm going from the second floor down to the uh, ground floor floor. So I'm moving offices. So I found another office. I'm moving offices. So it takes a minute because there's a lot of stuff. I have a big office. So I'm, 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 I'm getting smaller, but I'm staying in the same area. I'm still in the same building. So, but if you need counseling, I'm not doing counseling in my office. I'm doing online counseling only for residents in the state of Washington. If you are outside the state of Washington, I can offer you coaching, but it's totally different than mental health counseling. I will not counsel you on PTSD, uh, medication management, you know, assisting you with, uh, um, medication, uh, psychoeducation, you know, uh, 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 techniques on how to, you know, all that mental health stuff. That's not what I provide for you when I do coaching. When I do coaching, um, we do game plans. You know, what is it you're trying to do? Where are you trying to go? What, what is it you're trying to achieve? Tell me your story. Okay. How, what do you want to do? How do you want to do this? You know, let me show you the pitfalls. Let me show you how you are thinking. Let me show you how to do, you know, so coaching is coaching. And I have some awesome people that I'm coaching that are making progress. And I'm so proud of you guys. So if you want to do coaching with me, yes, you're welcome to email me, Dr. Carmen. Brian is right underneath the um right underneath the uh YouTube video you'll see all my information on there you give me send me give me send me an email and I will send you my um rates I am still offering discounted rates you guys send me an email and I will send you the rates um also if you want counseling and you're looking for counselors in your area or if you're looking for counselors to do online counseling you can go to a sponsored link called betterhelp.com backslash dot uh, I mean better help.com backslash Dr. Carmen. There we go. And it's underneath my video as well. And those are, uh, it's a nominal fee. They give you a 10% discount just for clicking um, on my link. And on top of that, if you're having any financial issues, talk to them. They may have grants for you. Some people have gotten grants, uh, low price, but a licensed therapist within your state, you know, within your state. And you look for, when you're looking for a counselor specializes in, um, look for those that specialize in trauma, post-traumatic stress, uh, complex post-traumatic stress, ask them if they understand PTSD, complex PTSD, child abuse, you know, those kind of verbiage is what you want to use. Okay. And, uh, later on, as you're talking to them, you'll just, dis you'll discern whether or not they understand what narcissist abuse is. You know, you can ask, uh, and you could just break it down and give them, do you understand all this right here? Psychological abuse. Do you understand this right here? Addictions, you know, ask them those type of questions. Also make sure that you go check out my, um, mentors <clears throat> YouTube channel is Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. Make sure you go subscribe to her page. Subscribe to mine, Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. If you follow us for six months, I guarantee you guys, there's going to be some changes in your life. She brings it to you from a biblical perspective. As a uh, senior, she's the presiding prelay of our ministry, has a whole bunch of ministries under her many, many leaders. She's global. She travels to Africa all the time. She's got many people that entrust her. She coaches many people and she brings them narcissist abuse from a, from a spiritual perspective. Now that's not the only reason why she does coaching, you know, or education, but that is what she does on YouTube. So please go subscribe and share her videos. You can catch me on Facebook. I'm on psychological health consultants and services or Overcoming Narcissist Abuse, which is on Facebook. I am on Instagram, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. I do have a book out. It is um, Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection. And you can find that. And it's uh, Narcissist Abuse, Abused by the Esteemed. And there's a real story of real people that have been through narcissist abuse. What was on their mind, how they were groomed, how they grew up, what they were thinking. You know, they went through the homicidal and suicidal thoughts, how they were discarded, how they were abused, and how people just uh, enabled the abuser to abuse. You know, some of the details of the stories of what they went through, you're like, oh my gosh, guarantee you you'll find the story of yourself in there and these are women that have been through this situation real people real experiences 
And uh, yes, it is. Uh, I do provide Christian encouragement. Um, however, many people that are not Christians, that are not believers of the Bible, have read that and they understood because they saw themselves in the book. Get the principles because the principles will help you and will give you some type of normalization to let you know that you are not crazy and you're not the only one that has been through this. And I appreciate you guys for trusting me because it takes a lot to start trusting a person and to listen to them and to, you know, when you start getting when you start not gathering, but when you start getting a lot of subscribers, letting you know there's something that you're doing is right. You guys are listening. Some of you guys are healing. Some of you emailing me, letting me know that you're healing. Please don't send me long, long emails. I don't have time to read them. You know, I wear glasses now. I didn't wear glasses at first. I wear glasses now. But when you write long emails, remember, I'm looking on a telephone, not a computer. And so, but I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for trusting me. Thank you. Thank you so much for trusting me. It is an honor and is a great privilege. And I do not take it lightly because of the fact that you guys have been so broken, have been so hurt. And for someone to come on and it resonates with you, I take that very seriously. Yes, I was a senior leader in the United States Army. They entrusted me with some of your children, you know, your grandkids. And I raised, it's like kids, you know, you raise them up in the military. You teach them, you know, simple tasks like cleaning a toilet how to balance the checkbook, how to open up a checkbook, you know, so I spent a lot of times and in, in, in protecting them. Uh, and so I find it is, is very important because I felt that I needed to handle them as if they were my own to take care of them and cherish them and honor them so they can be great people as they grow up. Because one day someone may do that for me and someone did. The very soldiers that I, that I groomed, that I protected was the same soldier that was there. And that was one of the ones that I was trying to rescue vicariously through myself, you know, but she was there for my children when um, the shooter was in uh, Fort Hood, Texas, and she went and made sure that my my children were safe. And so I always say you handle people and you take care of people because you never know who's on here that may protect my children one day, that may meet my children or my grandchildren one day, or who's to say I may not meet your children. So I take it very, I take, I do not take it very lightly uh, because I've been through it and I know what it feels like. And so I know what it feels like. I can't, I, I'm not saying I know what each one of you feel like because each one of us had a different experience, but I know what it feels like to be broken, to be torn up, to be hurt to think that you can never get back on your feet, that you can never smile, really smile and be happy again, that, you know, you don't see the, sil the, the silver lining on the or the light at the end of the tunnel. You don't see, you know, you don't see. So I've been there and I had good mentorship. And because it was given to me, I like to make sure that I give it back to you guys. And I know that was a whole mouthful at the end of the video, but I just wanted you guys to be encouraged because I haven't really been able to come on um, during the week because I'm busy. And so I kind of extend my time at the end of the video. But I want you guys to know that I really deep care about each and every one of you. I don't know you personally. I've never seen you guys, but but I have a heart for people that are hurting and I have a heart for people that have been through this type of abuse because I've been there. People call me crazy, don't know what I'm talking about. She just irate. She, you know, she a jealous woman. You know, I've been there. I understand. She just a bitter, angry black woman uh, for y'all's for y'all's that don't know that I'm black. But uh, just to let you know, but um, but yes, I've been there. I've done that. And so I want to be here to encourage you guys, even if it is just to smile for an evening, just to smile before you go to bed, you know, to smile and have a great weekend. I want you guys to know that I truly care about you guys. And that's why I do what I do, because I care. If I didn't care, I'd rush through here, give you some information and then I holler. But I care about you guys. And so I appreciate all your support. Thank you guys so much. Those of you that ask about giving, I do have a cash app and PayPal right up underneath the video. Whenever you guys donate, it helps me to keep doing what I'm doing to make the classes. Because that stuff costs y'all. So it's coming out my pocket. You know, so I need a little help. Y'all help me out. You know, do know that when you do it, like when I'm on lives, when you do it, um, I don't have a problem with you guys doing it. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But you know, YouTube going to get their cut, right? But if you do Cash App and PayPal, you know, usually I get more. Uh, PayPal can't, you know, they don't take out as much as what they take out on PayPal, uh, on YouTube. Is YouTube going to get their cut, you know, and get paid. But when you guys donate, it helps me to keep doing what I'm doing, you know, to pay for the, for the new website, to pay for the classes, you know, to finish writing the book. That helps me to do what I do to focus on helping you guys out. Once again, thank you guys so much, and you guys have a great weekend, and be great.